Yes, that's it. There it is. She was going for number one. She was giving those cold thoughts over to the Holy Spirit. And then, graciously, Suzanne comes in and offers some helpful, magical thoughts, too, that could even be shifting in the room. And there's nothing right or wrong about magic. It's just whatever floats your boat, whatever brings you joy. <laughs> we got it all. <laughs> Okay, well we've got a little time. We've got about 32 minutes before our lunch break. So again, we open it up to anybody if there's anything we're sharing. This is kind of a, a nice open Q&A session and then you have a nice lunch and then when you come back and settle down, then Francis will lead you into the experientials, which again is just designed to open your heart in a very trusting way to prepare yourself for the movie and then the movie will come yeah, a few a few people actually asked me what is the schedule for this afternoon because um, maybe you have an engagement tonight or something. But we're going to come back at 2.30 and uh, we will do some experiential um, ex experience and a little bit more set up. Then we're ready for the movie. The session this afternoon and the movie will finish at 5.30 and that will be uh, the end of the day. And then tomorrow we come back for another morning session from 10 to 1 for more questions and more uh, discussions and uh, yeah another one so Beautiful. that's what it is yeah so that's our format so yeah is there anything anybody would like any topics anything that in, you've been working with the course for a while and you start to feel mm -hmm. it's a little mysterious in certain ways but Maybe we can help point, clarify things a little bit. Since you, you actually called it the I'm here to be truly helpful, um, and only, I think it's the first time I actually heard the last part of it, that he will teach me, oh no, he, I will get healed by letting him teach me to heal. And I never, I never heard that, read that part, and I was always thinking, man, I wish I could do this, but I know this, every time I go somewhere, it's all about me, 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 you know, my thoughts, and, and, and like, what do I get out of it, and working with the situation, and like, the courses, and, and there's just this new, tiny spark of, hey, by following this from the beginning to the end, actually going to get exactly what I, what I want and hope for and what I've been trying to do all along. Mm. But it was more coming from this me, you know. And it, it, it's really like, and I, I feel the ego is not, it's almost like mm -hmm. nausea is handing this over, like what? It basically means I shall receive when I give, you know. I, I receive when I give. And it's, and it's like Huh? You know, like the upside down. But I'm so glad that this is um, that this is breaking loose because it was very. It was like I don't know why this is supposed to be helpful. I, I, I'm not ready yet. I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm not remembering to say this, and so I, I feel like this is cool. This is this is like <laughs> a little hey, hey, you know. I feel. beautiful because th that is a beautiful topic. Healing is a beautiful topic and just like Jesus says in the Course, it's not that you ask for too much, you ask for far too little. And the, the biggest block to healing is all of our past misconceptions about healing. Because we tie healing, we tie this beautiful vast topic of healing which is really remembering 
who we are as the Christ, and we shrink it down to a little microcosm, and we attach this vast experience of a healed mind to the bodies, our associations with bodies and symptoms. We actually believe that removal of symptoms from a body is healing. That's how small our definitions have become. We've forgotten, oh my gosh, this is about remembering who I am and, uh, and who my creator is. So it's almost like going from Newtonian physics to quantum physics. You know, quantum physics transcend all the laws of Newtonian physics. Most of us were raised with Newtonian physics and the scientific method and empirical knowledge and gathering information and forming conclusions from hypotheses of these little tiny little experiments. Then quantum physics comes along six, almost seven decades ago and they're afraid to publish the findings because they're embarrassed that they're going to be ostracized, ostracized from science for the findings that they're coming up with in their quantum experiments. The same with healing. If you are limited by the belief that healing is limited to the body, you will not know what healing is if, if that is the, the limit of your concept of healing. To put it this way, Jesus says, <clears throat> sins are in bodies. Sins don't exist in the mind, because in the mind, when you fe find out what that mind is, it is so full of light, so full of joy and happiness, that you could never conceive of a sin. Sins are in bodies because sins are always projected, the error is projected to the body, and, and whether it's symptoms or whether it's actions we judge we don't like, or actions we think people should do that they haven't done, that we expected them to do, the projection of error to the body is the ego's way of perpetuating itself and blocking the mind from true healing. Now here's a little teeny quote from the Course about healing that you can remember. This will take you back vertical. If this is the cross, you go right up the vertical, right into the Kingdom of Heaven, and you let go of that horizontal beam forever. And the line is, to heal is to make happy. That's from Jesus Christ. To heal is to make happy. To be in that joy, to be in that inspiration, to be happy. Isn't that what everyone wants, really? And admittedly, we've been looking for it in the horizontal plane. We're looking for love in all the wrong places and in too many faces, <laughs> uh, like the country song says. Uh, admittedly, we, we misplaced our desire for healing. Because we didn't know any better. We thought, well, this is the way the human condition is, so I've got to find it, make the best of life, and find happiness in the form, not realizing that we have to, we've got it too small, we have to go vertical. We've got to go right up into the divine mind to find that healing. And there's, we've had great way showers, the, the, the Buddhas, the Jesus, the Ramana Maharshis, Mary Baker Eddy, Somebody just was up in Los Angeles going, Oh, I love hearing you talk about Mary Baker Eddy. What did Mary Baker Eddy teach? There's no life in matter. There's no life, truth, substance, or intelligence in matter. Wow, that is a deep teaching. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what Ken Wapnick meant when he said, There is no life in this world, in answer to the question of whether there was life on other worlds. He was like giving us the straight shot. So, so if you just start to think about everything that you experience in this world, it's all a lesson for your mind. The mind is where the creative ability is. The mind is where the causation is. Bodies aren't causative. Nothing harms the body. In the world, through ego's perception, obviously one body can seem to harm or kill another body. In the horizontal perspective, there seems to be germs, there seems to be physical ailments, there seems to be organs of the body that degenerate and break down, the brain. That's all horizontal. What I'm trying to leave you with today is that everything that you perceive, without exception, is coming from the mind. The first time I read in the Course that all illness, Jesus says, all illness is mental illness. 
It's just, I had to take that in. Let me stop here. Stop what I'm reading. Let me drink that in. I'm, I was in 10 years of university. We had a big difference between heart disease, cancer, spina bifida, uh, all kinds of conditions of the body, and then mental, we would say, mental retardation, psychosis, schizophrenia, you know, we had, a, I was in psychology for some years, undergrad and then grad, and we had our DSM-3, and we had all of our classifications of all these mental disorders, and then there's a whole bunch of other physical disorders, and then Jesus has one line, only one line in the Course in Miracles, that wipes that out, wipes that huge gulf between the physical and the mental, and he says, all illness is mental illness. The ego is the belief in the mind that you are not who you are. It's the biggest gulf from being the Christ, from being pure spirit, to believing you're in a body, is, is an error of a magnitude that we can't even begin to touch. That's what the fall from grace was about. But now we have to train our minds to everything is mental. There is no distinction between the mental and the physical. What does this mean? How can this even be? The workbook of A Course in Miracles is saying, if you follow this workbook, I will show you that the thoughts that you think you think, and the world that you think you perceive or see, are identical. The world is not out there. The world exists only in the mind. Everything is perceived from the black holes to the quasars to the, the stars, the different realms, the different, <coughs> the, all the different cosmic dimensions, all of those cosmic dimensions are all existing in the mind. And, and as you withdraw the projections of thinking that that's outside and you start to bring it back to seeing that it's all just constructs in your mind, then you heal the, the, the projection of the split in the mind. You actually bring the darkness in your mind to the light and then the darkness disappears and you literally perceive a different cosmos. You don't even see the same world that you saw before. It's like a dance. Everything is unified. Everything is happy. Everything is joyful. But it's, you have to first come to see that it's a perceptual problem. That it's the lens that you're looking through and the thoughts that you think you think that are blocking you from the light. That's where you put all your effort. And I know it can sound wild, but it takes such a focus to do this. Because how, if you're caught up in family dramas, if you're caught up in what's happening with Mother Nature and the pollution of Mother Nature, if you're caught up in political, if you're caught up in, in even survival of the body, if you get too caught up in career, if you get too caught up in anything that the world deems is important, that's taking your attention away from your one function is to see that everything is in the mind. There is nothing outside of you, Jesus says. That is what you must ultimately learn. It's so huge. There is nothing outside of you. But it starts with the reminder. When you have a reaction to a, a comment that a politician makes, you know, you can say, this politician is not outside of my mind. If you have a, a reaction to a political party, this political party is not outside of my mind. This is, this is the way that Jesus worked with me over the years. When I would have reactions, I, I would say, I don't like, I don't like this, this society. And Jesus would say, the society is in your mind. I don't like this political party. That political party is in your mind. I don't like what's happening with, uh, with the pollution of this world. The pollution is in your mind. It was like Jesus was a, like a broken record, always saying, come back, bring it back, pull it back, <coughs> withdraw the projection and start realizing it's all your thoughts. And this is why the projection is even there, is because the projection was made by the ego to keep you mindless. 
it wants you to forget that you're a divine mind and think that you're a human being with a body and a brain. It, it does all kinds of tricks. It actually has, has says that your brain actually thinks. The brain doesn't think. This gray matter is part of a projection of the body. It, it doesn't think. These little neurotransmitters that we've been convinced that are our thoughts, Jesus says, thinking that these little neuro neurons in your mind, in your brain moving about, these little neurotransmitters and neuro thoughts, thinking that those are actually your thoughts is like holding up a matchstick to the sun. That's how nothing, these little neurotransmitters, these neurons going around in the brain, are like a matchstick, a little flame on a matchstick to the sun. The, the sun is meaning your real mind, your real thoughts. And what, why is there so much resistance to private minds and private thoughts and to sharing them is because everyone's like, oh, I kind of like the secret and I like to learn about manifesting and everything like this. And it's great if I can learn to manifest all the good stuff, cars, money, partners, soulmates, yeah, yeah, that good, 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 good. And then what about the flip side, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Chernobyl, uh, what about hurricanes, what about what seem to be some of the most destructive things on the planet? Nobody really wants to claim the manifesting for Hurricane Dorian going on now. I don't see that in the weather forecast. They don't say, here's the hurricane, it's as big as as the state of Florida, and your mind is doing this. It's your thoughts <laughs> that are doing this. Not popular. <laughs> Not popular. You know, oh, here's World War One. here's World War Two. Here's, here's Hiroshima, here's Nagasaki. Ah, but that's, you manifested Hiroshima, you manifested Nagasaki. It's, that'd be devastating. So that's why it seems safer and easier for the sleeping mind to project it out to an external world other than saying, I have done this thing and now it is this that I would undo. You see, it's not leaving us that we are destroyers. <laughs> Jesus is not a course in destroyers, you know. <laughs> I mean, admittedly when you start to read about projection and you read about the power of the mind and the power of thought, the ego would have you conclude you're a destroyer, you're, you're a miscreator, and you deserve to be guilty, and the ego would even say, you're guilty for eternity. There's no way out of this one. In fact, there's a, a line in the Course where Jesus says, the ego will pursue you beyond the grave. Sounds like some kind of a spiritual Freddy Krueger. You know, I mean, there, what could be worse than a spiritual Freddy Krueger? Oh, I, I slayed the ego. He's back. <laughs> lifetime after lifetime. He's not going away through destruction. You're not going to be able to kill the ego because this thing loves, it's based on murder. So if you try to kill it, it's like it feeds it instead of dispels it. So that's why peace, forgiveness, defenselessness, you know, Jesus' meekness. Jesus knows the way to dispel the ego. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, he said 2,000 years ago. The ego is underfoot. There's a, a little peace house I have in Cincinnati and I was taking walks around the peace house and I went up to this uh, church, St. Bernard's Church nearby, and I was walking around there and then I saw this beautiful statue of Mother Mary, and she has such sereneness in her eyes, and she's got this peaceful, graceful look on her face. And I thought, wow, this is a beautiful statue. And then I followed down her dress, followed down to her bare foot, and she had a snake under the foot, oh. with this serene look on her face, and this snake and an apple Remember the story of Genesis? The apple was stuffed in the snake's mouth. The snake couldn't move. It had an apple stuffed in its mouth and it was under her foot. 
And I was like, wow, what a powerful image. Mother Mary with a snake underfoot with an apple stuffed in. Even the fangs were just stuffed. They couldn't even bite. Because there was an apple stuffed in. I was like, I'll take your, your apple story, all right. And here, try some serenity and see what dominion over the world looks like. The, the Christ presence literally is not succumbing to fear, not terror. There's, that's a workbook lesson for today. I am, danger, I am in danger nowhere in the world in the presence of Christ's love. So the healing question is a good one because what it does is it's just, it just takes you from Newtonian to, to quantum. It takes you into my state of mind my presence is the healing of the world. It's, it's a new way of looking at the world with, with new eyes to realize who you really are. And, and there's no sense of succumbing to the belief that anything on the horizontal plane means anything. That's the meaning of, of I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In Christ, we come back to the holy instant. We come back to this moment our point of power, and we are not tempted by any thoughts of the future or any regrets of the past. We come back into that innocence. So healing is a great topic because really the topic of healing is really self-realization. It's, it's not about removal of symptoms. It's like Jesus with the woman at the well in the Bible, drink of me and you will never thirst again. He's not saying, I'll quench your thirst. It's like Morpheus talking to Neo in the Matrix. Neo's like, you're telling me that I'm going to be able to dodge bullets? No, I'm telling you, you won't have to. Drink of me and you will never thirst again. Drink of me and you will never struggle with the ego. Because you will dispel it by who you are by the light of who you are. And that's why the tears come, because it, it's just so vast, you know, it's like, I, the person of Gabriel, doesn't have to figure it out, doesn't have to understand what personal healing is, or even healing of the psyche, the individual psyche, or even interpersonal relationships. We don't even have to figure out interpersonal relationships and how to heal those. We have to simply give it all over in one swoop of, I do not know what healing is, but you do and you will show me. And it is inevitable. It is inevitable. <coughs> yeah, you know, I feel the freedom in this. I feel like this is really... Yeah, I think the And there's so many... I've had so many tastes over the past days. There's just so much happening. So much, like, falling apart, you know? Yeah. And also, the topics here today is just, like, supporting what's happening in yeah. my mind. Like, yeah. yeah. This is like a scaffolding. Like, you know, when I hear you, I, I feel it. Like, I feel it. It's not intellectually. There's only one. Oh, it's beautiful. You're in such a beautiful, receptive place that it's like... I can't say. I can't see the ego comes in, but it's, it's so, so weak the past days, you know. It's like, I just can't. I just can't do it anymore. This is also a great example because we only go where we're invited. And before Gabrielle even knew that the movie was finished, before she even knew it was released, she just started to feel like Francis in her mind so strong. And then she, she wrote to Francis, and then I was aware of it, and then it was like, well, but back then there was like thoughts of New England and uh, Florida and all these different things, but that's how we <laughs> seem to be here. It was through the prayer, through Gabrielle's prayer, of feeling it in mind. And even this 
gathering is almost like, a, you know, like when films are released, they have like a little focus group. Mm-hmm. But we're not here to, to judge the movie and to give it good reviews or bad reviews or whatever. We're here for the focus of healing. And we've all been brought together kind of in a quantum way. This, is, this whole experience in this house is like a quantum reflection of our deep desire for healing. And it always starts with a prayer. Because you had the prayer, and you had a prayer of also something huge. Like this would be just the beginning, but you even mentioned, like Francis is open to, like next spring doing like a full-blown thing. And you even saw that church, what is it, on the, by the ocean, and in your mind's eye, you could see a church filled with a, a big so group of... There's something called the Seaside, the Seaside Church. Seaside Church, seaside seaside church. church. yeah. And I'm like, James yeah. Nathan Kawa is coming in October, and I, I called them for... How is it with renting, and would you promote this? And so I got some details. And I know a few of the ministers there, so I'm happy. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm like, hey. Yeah. So it's almost like Gabriel got like a download, like, woo. <laughs> and then she just shared her download in an email, and then that's, that's you see how that, it all the spirit just orchestrates everything, arranges time and space. But it always starts with just a prayer, putting up a prayer, saying, oh, I feel this. And then, then before you knew it, email off to Suzanne and Edna and Mike, who's just been down with us in Mexico, and dink and dink and dink, and it all just clicks together very easily and very effortlessly. And so fast. And, and very fast. When yeah. I called you, because you invited me to talk about this, you on the phone with David about this. Yeah, well, and then you guys call the same time. Links us together in a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Even though before that, I'm like, should I call now? I just finished our expression session online. I'd rather go and eat. And it's like, no, do it now. We <laughs> 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 need to postpone, do it now. That's the right moment. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm glad because you were in Mexico, Francis, and I think I was in maybe Utah, and you couldn't add another person from Mexico for whatever reason. So they oh, okay, I'll, I'll add from, and there we were, we were all three, suddenly, quickly, <laughs> without planning and on this. while we have the meeting, I received the yes from Suzanne, yeah. as it takes. I remember that. While we were on the phone, yes. the no. message, like, the synchronicity of everything comes in. <laughs> and, and that's what we need, we need those kind of synchronicities mm-hmm. to be shown that we're not in charge, and it's okay that we're not in charge, mm-hmm. because it was like, orchestrated, orchestrated. And Mike, you being here, it was like, Mike, Mike, you know, Mike from, who was just visiting us, doing a devotional stay in Mexico, is here. Right. Is that we talked about doing this very thing. Mike was the only one who saw the movie uh, before it was premiered, because he just so happened to be in Mexico. I just finished it, brought it back from Europe, and I thought, you know, I don't have any agenda to show it to anybody, but hey, there's other people who live here with me. They they should watch it. And then Mike was the only one who who came to visit for that very month and that very moment. So it's just all, and he is here organizing this with Gabriel, with Suzanne. Just feel like those are the quantum moments where time and space are arranged. And it's not a personal effort, it's a huge collaboration without us even knowing that we, who to collaborate with, the Spirit <laughs> brought all of us together to do this. And I was actually just even thinking, because um, ha- um, Helen Shuckman finished the course after seven years, scribing it down, collaborating with Bill, and then said, this is, this is done, and it's all for this. Jesus said, no, this is, this is just to say I love you. And when I first heard that story, I thought, wow. But now it's different because how, much, how would we feel if we know without a shadow of doubt that Jesus is with us every single day? It's ecstatic. It is it's a, static. It's, it's a graced out bliss that no words touch. Yeah. And and when you try to when you try to tell it, mm-hmm. it doesn't make a yeah. lick of sense to very many people. <laughs> but they all get this. They get something from it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a it's a certainty. It's like a certainty. 
And that's what Jesus gave to Helen because he was with her. She knows without shadow of doubt that was his presence. Yeah. With her. You get, you think you're not alone. Exactly. And this is the kind of the kind of experience we're getting when we pray. And that is the end. You know, the course really is not aiming at us, you know, anything else except we know who are walking with us moment by moment. And that that end is immediate. It's not after 20 years of studying the book, that's where we reach. It's actually within the imme- immediate grasp. That's what I feel like whatever you're saying is touching the core of of what Jesus wants us to get. You know, this, this journey is not for us to decide on, it's not for us to, to heal ourselves, it's f- for us to give to him and let him direct, and let him show us, I'm with you, I'm with you, I got this, I got you, you are my beloved. And let me f- select the people and the channel to show you on a daily basis. It takes a lot, a lot of miracles because it, we're so used to the personal perspective and then we read in the Course, it's all in the mind and we read these things, but through the filter of so much past conditioning, we may read something in the Course, like all is one, and God is one, and God is love, and these things we've heard actually from the Bible for, for the last 2,000 years, but through the filter of the past learning, it can be there's a little voice in your mind that's going, well, okay, right, right, right. Sentimentally, I can agree with that, but that's <laughs> not my experience. You can hear it going like, well, that sounds good. Well, wouldn't that be nice? That, that, you know, it's just rattle, 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 rattle off there. And then, you know, we do need lots of experiences. I remember when I was reading Ken's book, Absence from Felicity, and Here's Helen, who's the scribe, who's a research psychologist, and you know, she's kind of interested in kind of new age topics, sometimes a little bit like a little bit of astrology. Her and Bill are like, ooh, this astrology. You know, they're research psychologists at Columbia Presbyterian Medical. They don't live in California, out here where everyone's like, yeah, multiple dimensions and multiple <laughs> real- parallel realities. Yeah, simultaneous. Cool, man, that sounds really good. You know, these are like research psychologists at a prestigious medical center in New York City. And so they're dabbling like, ooh, reincarnation. We can meet, we can meet Edgar Cayce's son. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Edgar Cayce, that's kind of psychic, you know. But they're, it's kind of out there. So they get into this thing of astrology and it's kind of, oh cool, astrology and all these life patterns and astrology telling people their future and their events and their life, giving meaning to them. So at one point yeah. Helen is like dabbling in these things and then she says to, uh, to Jesus, she said, well one thing I don't understand was what does the movements of the planets and the spheres have to do with the lives of uh, men and women and, and people on the planet. And he said, well, it's a direct connection. She said, I don't, don't see it at all. And he said, well, this mind of yours is moving all the people around and back behind that it's moving the stars and the spheres. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of pointing to the idea that of the projector to the whole thing, the dreamer of the dream. I remember just reading that line and I just flopped over in bed like, I was like for a half an hour, oh my God. Because we don't tend to think of our mind as the projector of all the characters. We don't tend to think of our, of our mind as projecting and moving the planets and the spheres. It seems so much like it's an external world, it's an external society, these are external human beings. And even Jesus says about the body, he said, the body is outside you, but it seems to surround you, shutting you off from others. Mm-hmm. The body is outside me, then tell me more about the me. <laughs> Who is the me? There's another point, this is like really deep, where he says, he says, time and space are one illusion, but the closer you think of it, to, your, to where you are, you think of it in terms of space, and the farther away 
it seems to be, you think of it in terms of time. You know? well, what does that mean? He's, what does that mean, Jesus? He said, well, look at your nose or look at your thumb. When you, that's the same error. Your thumb is in your mind. And those stars that you're looking at are in your mind too. And, but you think of it, your thumb, you don't say how, how much time away from me is the thumb. Uh -huh. Nobody has ever said it. <laughs> how, how much time is there between me and my thumb? You think of it when it's closer to the projector, you think of it in terms of space. You could say eight inches or something. See how that's a spatial measurement. But with the stars, we don't describe them in terms of distance because there's too many zeros. We describe them as light years. Light years. You hear the time part coming in? Because they're farther away from the projector. And so, then Jesus was like, now let's try, try history. And I said, history? And he said, you definitely think of history in terms of time. How far away from you is your thumb? Okay, maybe, I don't know, eight inches. How far away from you is Cleopatra? What do you mean? Why are you talking about a thumb and Cleopatra? The Cleopatra lived in Egypt centuries ago. My thumb is right here. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let's look at what your thumb and Cleopatra are both thoughts in your mind. And because Cleopatra seems farther away, you think of her in terms of time. But you think of your thumb in terms of inches. But it's the same illusion. You've got to get back to that projector. You've got to get back to the dreamer of the dream in order to be healed. Before you wake up from the dream, you've got to realize you dreamed it all up. You've got to have a lucid dream where you are aware of dreaming. You are lucid every day, every moment of every day. Then you will no longer react to the lions and tigers and bears, to the, to the, what seem to be the people, because you believe they're external to you. You will see that every person you meet is, is in your mind. And when you bring them all back together, it's a glorious picture. Because nobody is excluded. Nobody is thought to be as external. Think of it when we're growing up too. Remember, I remember when I was in grade school, I got this little book and it had, here's your classmates, class photo, and your hobbies and interests, and then it had best friends. And you put your best friends down. Best friends doesn't mean anything to Jesus. Agape love doesn't have close friends, best friends, strangers, <laughs> you know, acquaintances. Think of all the categories of relationship and friendship that the ego has made. And to Jesus, none of those categories have any meaning whatsoever. Not a lifetime partner of 70 years or somebody you met in the elevator for five seconds. There's no difference between a 70 year intimate relationship and someone you meet in the elevator for five seconds. And he even talks about that. In the, he says, even in the Manual for Teachers, that maybe you, a child bumps into an adult. Uh, and he talks about these seeming levels of relationships, but he's basically saying they're all identical. That there is no difference in intimacy. That even two people that seem to be complete absolute strangers can come together for 10 seconds and have the greatest intimacy in all the universe by simply seeing the Christ in each other. Mm -hmm. So, is that a mind blower? That intimacy is not a product of time. It's not a product of frequency of contact. It's not a product of what we would call communications, verbal, written communications. It's all a product of, of who we are, is knowing who we are. And that's why when you when he says, when you meet anyone, remember it's a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. 
he's training us to come into true empathy, to think in terms of light and love instead of these time concepts. Close friend, oh I barely know them, or I just met them, and all these kind of things. We don't have to live like that anymore. We don't even have to think like that anymore. And then you start to start to realize it's not even practical to think with all these judgments and categories anymore because it's only the ego that makes up all these categories. And, and we don't have to live like that. It's time. <laughs> we needed somebody. Somebody had to hold the watch up. Yeah. I'm just so content I couldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> You're all, all cuddled in there. She's like, lunch? Lunch? <laughs> we're, feeding, we're feeding each other in the elderly's way. For those of us who would like to consume what we think of this food, um, we've got a whole host of restaurants down near the Levite. So if you head towards the five. Um, Is this what Whole Foods is? Whole Foods, yeah.